ever been hit by a lightning bolt of inspiration only to end up staring at a blank page like a deer caught in headlights. Fear not, get ready to transform your writer's block into writer's bliss as we embark on an adventure to uncover the secrets of planning the perfect short story. Because let's face it, planning is the right way to avoid a plot disaster. Everything you need to easily pass English ATAR. English ATAR made simple. Powered by Saints Coaching. Hello and welcome to the last, if not one of the last planning lessons in Eames. At this stage of the course, there will be a bunch of lasts. And I think they should be celebrated because you've come a long way since starting. This lesson has two prerequisites. Number one, the lesson previous to this one, all about how to structure your response to an imaginative composing section question. Number two, intro to module five. I lied, there is a third prerequisite. I hope we can restore our relationship of mutual trust and respect. I'd highly recommend you go and rewatch because I know you've already completed the lesson on narrative point of view in module two. Anywho, let's check out our lesson objectives. We're jumping straight into it by outlining the planning steps for an imaginative text. Once we've outlined those steps, we'll go and apply them to a couple of past WACE exam questions. Specifically, we will apply the planning steps to example one and example two. After that, we will discuss a few planning tips not many though. We'll compare the planning steps and then we will top it off with a little, little simple summary. Let's dive into what we came here for. We're starting off with familiar territory with step number one, underline key parts of the question. Here you should underline the words in the question that you should understand and address. Still in familiar territory with step number two, define key parts of the question. This is where you should jot down a brief explanation of what those words mean and or write some synonyms for the words in the question that you're not sure of. Step number three is where we start to go off the beaten path a little bit with choose your genre or genres of subject matter. At this step, you should choose one or more genres of subject matter that your text will fall within. Check out the genres of subject matter table in the relevant lesson in module two if you're feeling a bit hazy on what this type of genre is all about. Choosing a genre of subject matter for your imaginative text is important because it will inform the type of conventions that you include, manipulate, conform to, etc. For example, if you've chosen the romantic comedy genre of subject matter, you might manipulate the convention of a happily ever after ending. Step number four is familiar territory, but it's just at a different stage of the plan except that we've seen previously. It is plan your pack. This is where you should decide firstly what the purpose of your text is, secondly who your audience is, and thirdly what the cultural context is. Note that situational context doesn't really influence the construction of an imaginative text as much as it does for persuasive and interpretive texts. That's why we don't plan for this type of context in imaginative texts. Step number five is select your narrative POV and type of narrator. For the narrative POV aspect of this step, you should decide whether you will tell your story from a first person central or peripheral point of view, a second person point of view, or a third person limited, objective, or omniscient point of view. For the type of narrator part of this question, decide whether the narrator will be internal, and if the narrator is internal, they can be reliable or unreliable. If the internal narrator is unreliable, you can further characterize the narrator as the picaro, liar, madman, or naif. If the narrator isn't internal, they'll be external. And you can further characterize the external narrator as detached, subjective, omniscient, intrusive. A couple of notes about step number five. This step replaces the choose a voice step for the planning steps for interpretive texts and persuasive texts. That's because you're indirectly choosing a voice when you plan the type of narrator. For example, you choose first person central as the type of narrative point of view. And for the type of narrator, you make them internal, unreliable, and specifically the knife. 
Importantly, by selecting the knife as your type of narrator, you are indirectly giving them the following voice or the following personality. Innocent, playful, cheery, naive, curious, irreverent, informal, humorous, friendly, etc. The second note is I wouldn't choose second person narrative POV unless you're an experienced creative writer. And that is all there is to it to step number five. Here is step number six, determine structure. Our first section in our structure is the exposition. The first element of the exposition is the characters element. At this step of the planning steps, you should utilize conventions of characterization to determine the key traits of your main characters. The next element of the exposition is the setting. Here you should outline the time, place and mood of the setting. The third and final element or ingredient of the exposition section is action. At this point you should determine the protagonist's mission. Those are all the elements of the exposition section. The next section in our short story structure is the background section and it is the first section in the middle part of the overall inverted claw structure. The first element or ingredient of the background section is the trigger. At this step of the planning steps you should create the trigger which as you recall is the event that outlines why the protagonist is in the situation outlined in the exposition. The next element or ingredient of the background section is the conflict. Here you should determine the type of conflict the protagonist faces. Recall the types of conflict that we addressed in the previous lesson on structure. Those are the elements of the background section of the middle part of our story. The next section of the middle part of our story is the rising action. The rising action section has just the one element and that is the setback. At this point of the planning steps, you should create an event that only just defeats the protagonist. The final section of the middle part of our short story is the climax. The climax has one element, one ingredient, it is the finale. At this stage, you should create an event whereby the protagonist narrowly defeats the antagonist, overcomes the conflict, and accomplishes their mission. The next section is the resolution, and it is the only section in the end part of our short story structure. The one element or ingredient of the resolution is the aftermath. Here you should construct the affirmation of transformation. That is all you do in step six. So easy. Second final step is pick a theme. A few notes about this step. Refer to the six common themes section of the lesson on concepts, themes, issues, and ideas in module two if you want some guidance on picking a theme. Also bear in mind the relationship between the type of conflict you select and the theme. For example, if you choose a character versus character conflict, the theme could be good versus evil. One final thing regarding the theme, remember that it is not explicitly stated in your text. It merely informs the way you write it. A theme is something that underlies your text. And final step of the planning steps is create title. Here, your job is nice and easy. You create a title that alludes to an idea or theme, character, and or plot point of your text. That's all the steps. As we go and apply them, bear in mind some of the similarities and differences compared to the other planning steps that we've learned in Ames already. Starting with example one. A new question, so exciting. Let's do it. Create a text within a particular genre that explores an idea represented in this image. This image is the following. It was originally used in the 2019 WACE exam. That is our question. This is our text. This is step number one. Underline key parts of the question in relation to it. First key part, create a text. Second key part, within a particular genre. Third key part, the word explores. Next key part, the words an idea. Final key part, the word represented. That is step one. This is step two, defining those key parts. Create a text means you can choose which genre of form and structure you're going to use. Our genre of form and structure is a short story, so this part of the question is already covered. The phrase within a particular genre allows you to select a particular genre of form and structure and or a particular genre of subject matter. We just established we've already chosen what the genre of form and structure is and we plan our genre or genres of subject matter in a later step of these planning steps. 
Some synonyms for the word explores are investigates, considers, examines. We know from the relevant lesson in module two that an idea means a specific comment a text makes about a concept, theme, or issue. Very importantly, these words an idea means one idea should be showcased because the word idea is written in its singular form. Finally, we know from the lesson on representation in module two that the word represented in this question can be better understood as re-presented with a hyphen between re and presented. That is step number two. This is step number three. Choose genre or genres of subject matter. I've selected two, drama and dystopia. Good pacing. Let's go. Step number four, plan your pack. Starting with the P in this acronym pack, purpose. The purpose of my short story is to challenge the audience to consider how time dictates their lives. The A in pack stands for audience. I've chosen my audience to be middle class adults. The C in pack stands for context and for a short story, we're only planning the cultural context. A socio-cultural feature of the cultural context I have determined as relevant for my short story is with technological advancement, there is seldom or rarely a moment in someone's day when they don't have access to the time. That is step number four. Step number five, select narrative POV and type of narrator. My narrative POV will be first person central. My type of narrator will be internal reliable. Next step of the planning steps is determine structure. Turning first to the exposition section of my short story, specifically the character's element of it. Starting with my protagonist, his name is Neil. He picks his nails, he's pretty skinny, and he has restless leg syndrome. My antagonist is a woman by the name of Jessica Pierce. She rings a bell. Jessica Pierce is immaculately presented. She personifies strict adherence to time and she is curt, meaning rudely brief. The final character in my short story is Neil's sidekick. Neil's sidekick is Hannah, Neil's wife, who is very supportive but concerned for his well-being. Turning to the setting element of the exposition, the time is Monday, the place is a law firm, we love them. The mood is unsurprisingly tense. Turning to the third and final element of the exposition section, we've got the action. I've determined at this point that the protagonist wants to finish work early so he can go and meet his newborn child at the hospital. That's the stuff that I want to do in the exposition part of my story. In the background section, I want to do the following. Specifically for the trigger element, I've planned that the event that causes or triggers the protagonist into action is that Hannah, his wife, goes into labor. Then for the conflict element of the background, I've said that the type of conflict is external, specifically character versus society. Even more specifically, it is Neil versus society's adherence to time. Turning to the first section of the middle part of our story, the rising action. It's one and only element is the setback. And for the story, I've determined the setback is Jessica not allowing Neil to leave the office until he's met his billable hours. The next section of the middle part of the story is the climax. Like the rising action, the climax has just one element, the finale. And for the finale, Neil will stand up to Jessica. The final section in the final part of our story is the resolution. Like the two prior sections before this one, it only has the one element. It's the aftermath, and this is where Hannah tells Neil that she's proud of him for standing up to Jessica. That's all you do for step number six. For step number seven, bit easier, it's pick a theme. The theme that I have chosen is courage and perseverance. Step number eight, it is the final one, create title. My title is about time. That also sounds familiar. Example one, done. Here's example two. I just want to mention that there is a handwritten version of the plan that we're about to look at in the PDF activities for this lesson. You'll see it when you go and start the activities. Obviously. But feel free to go and grab it now if you'd like to compare the steps when they're actually handwritten as opposed to just being typed and seeing them on the slides. Our question, she is a beauty. Create an imaginative text with a central voice that conveys hope or redemption. Those are some powerful words. Let's plan for this powerfully worded question with step number one, underline key parts of it. First main part, the word, a central voice. Second main part, the word, hope. Third main part, the word, 
or fourth and final main part, the word redemption. Step number two, let's define those key parts. The words a central voice suggests the text should utilize first person central POV. We know that voice really just refers to the sense of personality and the word central is synonymous with the words main or dominant. So therefore, if we put those two meanings together, we've got a main or dominant sense of personality. Refer to that discussion earlier in the lesson about the relationship between voice, narrative POV, and type of narrator, if this point doesn't make sense. The next key part is the word hope. Our trusty ode defines hope as a feeling of expectation and desire for a particular thing to happen. Skipping to the final key part, the word redemption. Ode defines redemption as the action of saving or being saved from sin, error, or evil. Coming back to this other key part, the word or. It means that we must clearly convey to the marker that we have conveyed hope or redemption, not both. Step number three, choose your genre or genres of subject matter. I have chosen drama, history, and war. Step number four, plan your pack. The P in pack stands for purpose. The purpose of my text is to illustrate the innocence of an adolescent growing up in a concentration camp. The A in the pack stands for audience. My audience is young adults or older. Finally, the C in the pack stands for context, only cultural context though, no situational for an imaginative text. And an obvious historical feature of the cultural context is World War II. You'll see over the next few lessons how relevant that event is on this story. Step number five, select narrative POV and type of narrator. The narrative POV will be first person central. The type of narrator will be predominantly unreliable. They are the naif, they're ignorant due to, in this case, innocence and youth. Next step, determine structure. Turning to the exposition section of the story first and specifically the character's element. My protagonist is Charlie. He's 14 years old, confused about what's happened to him, and he hasn't seen his mum in days. My antagonist is Nazism, which is personified by SS soldiers. The protagonist's guide is his dad. Charlie's father guides him to win the game. Next ingredient of the exposition is the setting. The time of which is 1944, the place is Auschwitz, and there is a fearful yet hopeful mood. Final element of the exposition is the action. The action is Charlie and his parents are prisoners of war at Auschwitz concentration camp. The protagonist's mission is to escape the camp. Turning to the background section of the story, specifically the trigger. The trigger for this story is Charlie and his parents were forcibly removed from their home. The final element of the background section is the conflict. The type of conflict we've got for this story is character versus society, specifically Charlie versus Nazism. Next section is the rising action. This has just the one element. The setback for the story is Charlie loses a loved one prior to his first escape attempt. Then we've got the climax, also just has the one element. It is the finale. This is where Charlie escapes. Final section, the resolution. It has also one element. It's the aftermath. One year later, Charlie contemplates his experience while eating breakfast in his family home's dining room. Second last step is pick a theme. The theme I have chosen is good versus evil, and also love, courage, and perseverance coming of age, but mainly the first one. Final step is create title. My title is Simon Says. Coolio, making good time. That is our application of the planning steps to example one and example two. Let's discuss some planning tips. Tip number one, skip step one and step two if you understand every word in the question. Tip two, treat step eight as the first part of your answer. Just the two tips, let's look at tip number one first. Generally speaking, the terminology used in composing section questions is more basic than the terminology used in other questions of the exam. Remember, the whole purpose of step one and step two, the why behind these steps, is to ensure you understand exactly what each word means in the question, so you can properly answer the question. If you already understand what each word in the question means, there's no point in completing step one and step two. You might be wondering, how do I know if I understand every word in the question? Ask yourself, do I know how to address or engage with this word in my response to the question? Hmm. For example, create an imaginative text with a central voice that conveys hope or redemption. 
This is the question for example two. I wouldn't have realized the underlined term suggests I should adopt a first person central narrative POV had I not taken the time to underline and define it per step one and step two. All of that's to say when it comes to step one and step two, take a common sense approach. Tip two is treat step eight as the first part of your answer. Note, if you already know what your title will be, it's a waste of time writing it in your plan when you can simply write it at the top of the next page and treat it as the first part of your answer. See the handwritten plan below this lesson's activity for an illustration of what this looks like. However, if you don't already know what your title will be, brainstorm some options in your plan, then write your preferred option as the first part of your answer on the following page. Here's an example of what this could look like. If I was brainstorming some options for the title of example two, I might come up with the following. The boy at the fence and Simon says. Completing this process as step eight of my plan then enabled me to choose Simon Says as the title of my text. Easy peasy, let's compare the planning steps for the other text types that we've learned in Eames with the planning steps that we just learned. Step one, for comprehending and responding section questions, we underline keywords. For composing section questions of a persuasive or interpretive nature, we underline keywords. For composing section questions that are of an imaginative nature, we oh, we underline keywords. Oh. Step two of the planning steps. For comprehending and responding section questions, we define keywords. For persuasive and interpretive, we define keywords. And for imaginative, we oh, get out of here. We define keywords. Step number three. Comprehending and responding, we reword the question. Persuasive and interpretive, we plan our pack. Imaginative, we choose the genre or genres of subject matter. Step number four. Comprehending and responding, we diagram the elements. Two elements for comprehending, three to four for responding. For persuasive and interpretive, we choose a voice. For imaginative, we plan our pack. Note, it is the cultural context only, not situational. Then we have step number five. For comprehending and responding, we complete the diagram. This is pretty brief for comprehending section questions and somewhat more detailed for responding section questions. For persuasive and interpretive responses, we determine structure. This essentially involves deciding how you'll activate the audience and the main things you'll discuss in each body paragraph for both of these text types. Finally, we have imaginative, and this is where we select the narrative POV and type of narrator. As we've already established, we've got first, second, and third person point of view, and we've got internal and external narrators. After step number five, we have step number six. For the comprehending and responding sections, we determine structure. For persuasive and interpretive, we create a title. For imaginative, we determine structure. At this stage, we determine what the elements of the exposition, background, rising action, climax, and resolution will look like in our story. Then we've got step number seven. Not a thing for comprehending and responding section questions, nor is it for persuasive and interpretive, but it is for imaginative and that is pick a theme. Step number eight, it's the same thing as step seven, not a thing for comprehending, responding, persuasive or interpretive, but it is for imaginative. It's where we create our title. Note, you're just creating a title. There's no subtitle, although there can be, and there's no byline or comments or topic sections like we've seen for other text types in module five. Beautiful. That is all the main info for this lesson. Let's do a simple summary. For the first part of the lesson, we looked at the planning steps for an imaginative text. Step one, underline key parts of the question. This is where you identify words you need to understand and address. Then at step number two, we define those key parts of the question. Specifically, you should jot down an explanation or some synonyms for the words you underlined. Step three, choose your genre or genres of subject matter. Pretty self-explanatory. Choose one or more genres of subject matter your text will fall within. Step four, plan your pack. Specifically, decide your purpose, which is the P in pack, the audience, which is the A in pack, and your cultural context, which is the C in pack. After that, you select your narrative POV and type of narrator. Regarding the narrative POV, we've got a few options. You can choose first person, central or peripheral, second person, 
though I wouldn't recommend it, or third person, limited, objective, or omniscient. You've also got a few options for type of narrator. The narrator can be internal, and if they're internal, they can be unreliable, specifically the Picaro, the Knife, the Madman, or the Liar, or Reliable. If they're external, the narrator can be detached, subjective, omniscient, or intrusive. Step number six is determine structure. At this point, you should determine the elements of the exposition, which are the characters, setting, and action elements, the background, which are the trigger and conflict elements, the rising action, which is the setback element, the climax, which is the finale element, and the resolution, which is the aftermath element. Step number seven is pick a theme. Remember, a theme is a recurring and underlying element of the text, and you should pick one of those your story will explore at this step. Final step is create title. Your job at this last step is to create a title that alludes to a theme or idea, a character, and or a plot point of the story. After we outlined what the planning steps for an imaginative text are, we applied them to two past waste exam questions, example one and example two, which we'll be looking at in the following three lessons. If you want to revisit the discussion we had about example one and example two, obviously you can just rewind this video or check out the PDF study notes. Then we looked at some planning tips of which we have two. Tip one, skip step one and step two if you understand every word in the question. If you already know how to address or engage with a word in your response, you probably don't need to underline and define it. Tip two is treat step eight as the first part of your answer. If you already know what your title will be, it is simply a waste of time writing it in your plan when you can just write it at the top of the next page and treat that as the first part of your answer. If you don't already know what your title is, all good, create a condensed version of it in your plan, then write the complete version as the first part of your answer on the next page. Finally, we compared the planning steps. Check out the PDF study notes for the comparison table. Congrats on finishing one of the last, if not the last lesson on planning in Ames. As I have repeatedly stressed, planning is an essential part of any response that you complete in any English exam or really any English assessment. So hopefully you have found these step-by-step -step approaches useful. They only help you get better marks if you practice them and use them in assessments. In light of that, make sure you complete the activities for this lesson. Obviously doing these activities activities are important as well because they're the foundation for completing the next three lessons activities. So make sure you read the instructions carefully because they do vary based on whether imaginative texts are your first, second, or third text type preference. Good luck with all of that. I'll see you in the next lesson all about the exposition. Until then, keep it simple. Huh? Keep it simple. What? Keep it simple. What? Keep it simple! <gasps>